So I want to make a wanted to make a quick video here, and I wanted to take time to kind of go over a couple questions that I've been asked uh, quite a few times on you know different videos I posted regarding the Alienware. Um, so that's what this video is going to be out, and it's going to be about a quick update on this thing. It's been about a week now since I've had, or, or since I've did the format, um, and honestly, it, it really hasn't had any hiccups. Yesterday, I would say, is the first time that it did mess up, and I believe it completely was my fault. What happened was I had turned on the computer, and I had stepped away, and I came back, and I right away loaded Alienware Command Center, and it started spinning. And I was thinking, great, now we're starting this bullcrap again. Well, I checked the taskbar and it looks like the virus scan loaded. So I turned it off, turned to Alienware Command Center, or exited it out and relaunched it. Um, now maybe it would have done something better if I actually went into Task Manager and, and you know, force end tasked it, but I just simply closed all the program, reloaded it twice, and it kept spinning. So I just decided to restart the computer, turned it back on, and right away turned off Kaspersky's, went right in, loaded the Alienware Command Center. After it initialized, and it's, you know, 30 seconds right away, the um, thermal controls loaded. And I thought, well, it didn't load when I... I you know, walked away, and it was a good 20 minutes or so that I the computer had loaded, so everything was loaded. So I did the same thing, restarted it a couple times, changed it from like one minute, two minute, 15 minutes, 20 minutes, as long as the virus scan was disabled, the thermal controls loaded instantly, no problem whatsoever. So I 100% uh, think that it has something to do with the virus scan, at least Kaspersky's. I'm not sure if anyone's having other issues. I've, I've, I've seen tons and tons of threads with the command center. Um, I still haven't done any of the updates. So this is the exact version that the computer had when I got it out of the box. And I'm assuming they have a pretty, you know, up-to-date version since the computer was just built in April. Um, and I think the latest one, I think for the controls came out mid-April. So it may not have that, but the command center, I believe it has um, the March update that they had. But if not, this, this one seems to be working and there's not really any features or anything different about the two versions. So maybe some stability issues, but it seems not very stable with it. Uh, at least with its update. A um, couple other questions I've been asked as far as, I know someone had said, you know, why did I get the white version? Um, if I don't like the white version, and, and honestly, my, my biggest reason and only reason for the white version was the 360 hertz screen. Um, not so much just for gaming, but, you know, for movies. I do like to watch movies and YouTube videos and, and you know, editing. So having a full, I don't do any editing right now anymore, but knowing that I have a good screen, it, it definitely will come in handy. And I figure for a 4K, if I need a 4K screen... I can always connect to my TV, um, or I went out and bought this curved AOC um, gaming monitor. It's not 4K, but I mainly got it for my wife to be able to connect to, and uh, it's got fingerprints on it because my kid plays on it, but that was why I went with the white version. I don't know why Dell doesn't have an option to get this in. Um, in the darker color, I think that this would have uh, been even more of a seller. As far as the thermals go, I know that's been kind of a good, you know, number one question. A lot of people have said it, it runs really hot and that it does. Um, my number one reason on choosing Alienware and Dell, uh, outside of the financing option, of course, is the fact that they do put a lot of power into their systems. There's, there's not really a, a limit that they're putting on the CPU or GPU as far as, you know, that it can get up to 165 watts. So other companies, you know, cap that down a lot lower. And of course that's gonna help with overall performance and thermals. But I feel that with enough research and knowledge and 
um, tweaking you can get your own thermals down just by doing your own undervolting instead of having the manufacturer do it for you so I, I like the aspect of being in more control and with the um, levels that I have it now which I'll show you here real quick they are doing pretty good the highest it's got just at idle is 69 um, we can look at our limits and this is just because it's on battery I don't have it plugged in and I had it plugged in to uh, only a 180 watt charger last night just to charge it um, so it was being a little bit underpowered in that aspect but as far as gaming goes um, I've tried to follow a little bit more on the Ryzen boost I think it boosts up to 4.6 so that's kind of what I wanted to aim for at least to kind of help with the temperature wise and then I have it offset currently at negative 90 um, I've tweaked it around between 100 and 90, so somewhere in between there on the GPU core and cache, it seems to be doing pretty good. And then I have the thermal velocity boost disabled. Um, before, when I had this in the 70s, Need for Speed Heat, we, we were still cooking at about 95, 96 degrees. And uh, that, that's just too hot for my comfort. I know Dell says that they're designed to get that hot, but for me personally, I just, I don't want to get that hot. So with this, it ranges right around 85, 86. So not bad at all. And there's no performance loss. In fact, actually my frames per second have actually increased um, since I've throttled it down a little bit or undervolted, I should say. So, I really can't complain with it. it. It's been a great computer, and I, you know, there's a couple little things that I, I wish, like, you know, the backlight, but honestly, it's not really that big of a deal for me. Once I know where the keys are, it, it's pretty much I know where the keys are, and I don't really need it to light up at all. Um, I know a lot of people have been kind of, going back and forth whether or not they should get the R4 or the R5, the M15 R5. And honestly, I, I'm not going to lie, the R5 definitely looks like a nice computer. Um, I kind of want one myself. But would I justify giving up my 3080 for downgrading to a 3060? Even with it being paired with the Ryzen, you know, I, I think you're still going to have favorable performance. Um, but I like that this thing has 16 gigs of video dedicated RAM. Um, I do like the mechanical keyboard option. I thought that was something that they were going to put in on the R5, but I guess not. Um, I say too many ums. But the one thing that I do like about the R5 that I think does have going for it is it still has a, a, a beautiful screen you are getting the same amount of ports minus the Thunderbolt port, but you have the option to upgrade the RAM. It comes with 16 gigs of RAM, but it has SODIMM slots, so you can actually go out and upgrade it. Now, I don't know if it maxes out at 32 or if it goes higher, but if it maxes out at 32, it's really hard to say. I've seen arguments all over YouTube where the Ryzen is going to outperform as far as, you know, overall editing and, and things like that. But when it comes to gaming, Intel's got the upper hand. Um, the other complaints on that that I've seen is Intel just runs hotter, um, whereas AMD is a little bit cooler. But a lot of that has to do with voltages and whatnot. So... I feel that you can get an Intel to run if you undervolt it fairly decent and maybe performance even comparable to the Ryzen. Um, but as far as the R5 goes, is it worth, you know, if you have an R4, is it worth upgrading to an R5? I believe the price point is $1,700, so it's significantly cheaper than what I paid for this one. But at the same time, there's a lot of limitations and expandability options that you can get on the R4 that you can't really do on the R5. Now, I'm sure they're gonna come up with more variations of it, and I'm hoping that they'll come up with an R5 for the M17, um, 
and, and still have the upgradable RAM option, then I think that might be the better option to go if they can give you more options like they have on this. But for right now, I, I'd still say Intel, honestly, with tweaking it, you're, you're going to get, you know, really nice performance out of this thing. And if you tweak it just right, you'll get really good thermals as well. Um, I'd say my thermals right now are, are pretty decent. You know, 85, 86 is not bad. I think the highest I've seen it was 89. And that was because this was kind of closer to it. Um, but the other big thing, too, that I think it's important to mention is that you're in complete control. You can boost up to 5.0 uh, gigahertz if you need to. I don't think I really need to. That's way more power. So just undervolting it and turning the turbos down definitely helps. Um, I think being in the 17-inch chassis that this is in definitely also helps. More airflow, bigger fan option, or at least bigger, you know, heat pipes for it. So as far as the updating to an R5, I'd say either or. Uh, me personally, I'm I'm still glad that I went with the R4. I know a couple people have commented and said that they've canceled their R4 and are going to go with the R5, and that that's fine. Um, I don't know why they don't have a mechanical option for the R5 since the R4 M15 has it. I would think the M15 R5 should too, but as of right now, it doesn't. And um, that's really kind of all I have for this update. Uh, need for Speed Heat, I guess the last thing I can add to it with the undervolting is Need for Speed Heat was right around 79 to 82 frames per second. Now it's about 88 to 95 frames per second since I've done the undervolting. So it definitely goes to show that lowering power can definitely increase overall performance and it's going to make the computer last longer. Um, if you don't undervolt it, you know, I, I don't think that you have to. So if you want something that you can just take right out of the box and not have to worry about undervolting, you definitely can. It's just something to be mindful that it will run hot. I for sure recommend, and I recommend this with any computer, is purchase the extended warranty if you don't want to have any kind of problems where you have to fix. Like, I don't mind if I have to replace a hard drive or something like that. But if something internally goes wrong, like a motherboard or a port or something internally um, that's, you know, soldered on, I'd rather just the company deal with it and not me. Just saying. So if you are concerned about thermals, pay the extra $100 and get the extended warranty the premium warranty or even do the basic that's what i did with this one i got the basic and then right before it ended i just went and purchased the extended and i i knew i was going to purchase the extended i kind of messed up my son's dirty hands um i kind of messed up because i could have got it for 86 dollars for a year for premium if i would have got it about a month before it expired but i waited till like a day or two before it expired and had to pay the $99. This has a year of premium support. This now has premium support extended. Um, this still has the year. So I highly recommend it. It's going to be worth it just for the simple fact that you know if something were to go wrong, you don't have to worry about it. And even someone like myself who is pretty tech savvy and has no problem, you know, I had no problem when they were going to send me the motherboard for this, and then they decided they weren't. Um, my head, I was thinking, you know, I pay for you guys to do it, but if I have to, that's fine. I just want the part and know that it'll be fixed. But that's pretty much my update on the Alienware, and um, we'll be sure to make more videos 